Hello, everybody, and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311, and this is your channel for everything VR related. Today, we're talking about VR tech that you just don't need. But many of these items have their place, but they're either very niche, ineffective, or the average user is better off spending their money elsewhere. I will be focusing on hardware rather than simple VR accessories, so don't expect to see things like Quest controller straps or pulley systems on this list, as I've already covered the vast majority of those accessories in another video. Now there are of course links and timestamps down in the description, but before we jump in, this video is brought to you by Kiwi Design, one of my favorite sites for VR accessories. They just released some brand new Quest 2 hand straps that will give you that Valve Index feel and allow you to completely let go of the controllers. They also have plenty of other accessories like controller weights for those of you who work out in VR, cable management systems, and my favorite accessory, their super durable and extra comfy Quest 2 Elite strap. There are links down in the description and don't forget to use discount code MATEO311 for 5% off and to help support this channel. Okay, so we're gonna order this video from items that you might want, but don't really need, all the way down to items that currently have no place at all in VR. So first up on the list is a VR haptics vest. Now, if you're familiar with my site, you might be surprised to see this on a list of useless VR tech. But like I said, we're working our way up to items that are useless and starting with things that are just a bit more niche. I currently own a B haptics X40 tax suit and absolutely love it. It can definitely add a significant amount of immersion to a VR title, but it comes with a very hefty price tag. Starting at $300 for the lower end X16 tax suit and moving all the way up to $500 for the X40 is a very big ask. That's 60% more than the currently most popular headset, the Quest 2, and it won't support every single game out there. So while it is a great product that I thoroughly enjoy, it's hard to recommend to people who aren't VR enthusiasts or don't have a large amount of disposable income. So when you see all the popular VR YouTubers out there flashing their fancy vests, don't feel left out because you might be better off just spending that money on lots and lots of new games. Now, another piece of immersion enhancing tech that definitely has its place, but is hard to recommend to everyone is the cyber shoes. For $350, you do get a cool new way to interact with your games, and it can be extremely helpful for people who suffer from motion sickness, but roller skate gliding across the floor is a bit awkward, doesn't add too much extra immersion, and it's more awkward to control than just using the joystick. The fact that it has the potential to solve motion sickness for some individuals is the only true item of value in this product for me. So for those individuals, it could be a lifesaver, but for most others, it might just feel like clunky extra cardio. Now, another piece of VR tech that I would rank in a similar manner is VR treadmills. Similar to a haptic suit, they can definitely add extra immersion, but the cost is much more significant and not just monetarily. For starters, they are clunky, awkward to use, at least at first, less than ideal for long gameplay sessions, and can limit your overall mobility. And on top of that, they're extremely expensive, coming in at $1,400. Now, overall game support is really good as this works with any Steam VR title that uses free locomotion, but we are now in extreme VR enthusiast territory, and I just don't believe this product is ideal for personal home use. It's a cool experience for an arcade setting, but unless you're someone with a summer home and a yacht, I really can't recommend this product to you. The cost benefit ratio is just not there. Now, next on the list is VR gun stocks. Now, I'm not just talking about those basic sticks with some magnets on them. Those personally, I haven't had great experiences with. I find most cumbersome and don't help my overall aim, but I really wanted to focus more on the gun stocks that have included force feedback. The force tube comes in at around $400, which includes a VR gun stock that I've already stated isn't very useful, plus a butt end that can give you some kickback. Now, that is a lot of money to spend for a little bit of additional haptic feedback. If you are an immersion junkie VR enthusiast, yeah, you will probably have some fun with this, but this product can actually make you less competitive in multiplayer games, and most of the tech that I already mentioned before this will add even more immersion. So once again, this is a big spender VR enthusiast item. Now moving away from these ridiculously priced items for a second, we have some Quest charging stands. Now a charging stand is a basic accessory and you might want one just to pretty up your room, but I needed to include this on the list because many of the third party headset stands have fatal flaws. Your Quest 2 does not need rechargeable batteries for the controllers. 
By some black magic, the AA batteries in the Quest 2 controllers can last for months. So unlike Vive Wands, Index controllers, or even your Xbox or PlayStation controller, you definitely don't need to charge them on a daily basis. Even worse, a lot of these charging docks are not compatible with third-party Quest hand straps, or even the Elite strap for the headset or battery packs. I currently have four separate stands and they are all useless. One of them refuses to hold the Quest 2 if you are using anything besides the default strap. The Elite strap makes it too heavy and it falls backwards. Two of my other stands came with a non-replaceable charging cable and the length is too short to reach the back where my headset has a battery pack. So while the headset might look a little bit neater sitting on my desk, I need to run a second cable anyway. So if you're in the market for a Quest headstand, I don't recommend you spend the extra money for one that has all bells and whistles, because until I find one that doesn't have any of these flaws, I just can't recommend any of them. Okay, our next pieces of VR tech are just extremely niche. Now, the first one is a VR headset with built-in eye tracking. Now, the main one is the Vive Pro Eye, and Pimax sells an eye tracking module for nearly $300. The only problem is, at the current moment, there's very little benefit for these products. I do expect this to change in the future, mainly because eye tracking is included in the upcoming PlayStation VR 2, so we will eventually see graphical and performance benefits from foveated rendering, but currently the only thing you get out of eye tracking is the ability to wink in social apps like VR Chat and Neos VR. So unless you are a VTuber, or we see large-scale implementation of foveated rendering, this is just technology that most people won't benefit fit from. It's also extremely expensive to get a headset that includes eye tracking at the current moment. Now, a similar piece of technology also comes from HTC, and that's their facial tracker interface. While it will work with non-HTC headsets, you'll have to rig something up to hold it in place on a different headset. So it's a product that doesn't really work for most VR gamers. And once again, it'll only really work in social apps like VR Chat and Neos VR. So if you're not a VTuber or social app junkie, you're gonna get very little benefit from this product. Now in truth, technologies like eye tracking and facial tracking are most likely the future of VR. But right now it's tech that is so niche and the average user just doesn't need to spend their money on. And speaking of products that I can't recommend right now, but are most likely the future, we have BCIs or brain computer interfaces. Now I'm not worried about you guys wasting your money on any of these products right now because there's not many consumer level devices available right now anyway. Nextmind currently sells a developer kit, but at best it's just intriguing technology. I know Valve is extremely interested in making this tech a reality, but right now it's not where it needs to be. My personal experience with BCIs is they're unreliable, uncomfortable, clunky, and take a lot of effort to get a little bit done. Now if this technology does successfully progress, it will feel like pure magic. A simple example is games like Blade and Sorcery, where you have the option to pull objects towards you with the controller, but now imagine doing that just by thinking it. And that's just one tiny bit of potential that BCIs have. Now having that ability and feeling like a Jedi is more than enough for me, but BCIs could give you a whole new method of interaction. Unfortunately though, at the current moment, there's no practical applications for VR, and it's just useless VR tech. Okay everybody, that was today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And as always, I will see you guys on next time.